At Baltimore Washington International, Howard has been called by baggage services to deliver bad news to Nigerian grandma-to-be, Sestina Abiora. The fish can't go because it's not packed properly. Call this number for me. Call him for me. I just got to call him. Sestina is transporting a Nigerian delicacy to her pregnant daughter, but her precious cargo is against the rules. Sestina's lack of English isn't helping, so Sharmala phones a family member to translate. Hello. Who's this, your son? Yes, hi, this is Sharmala from Southwest Airlines. You just dropped, you just dropped a passenger off here. She has fish in her bag. She has fish in her bag. And you can't have fish in your bag. Okay, hold on. He's yelling at me. Hello? Right here, honey. Hello? Okay. Hello? Hello? Okay, we have to go to baggage service. The fate of Sestina's fish will be decided downstairs. In Baltimore, Sestina's Nigerian fish are causing a commotion in baggage services. Can you smell it? She wants to open the bag. Who is this one for me now? Do you have a key for it? Yeah, they don't call until they actually get close to it. Put the fish in here, okay? Well, you see that that's gone moldy there. See, see, that? see this? The bug? The bug? Huh? See that? The uh, no, huh? Sorry, sorry, but not the bug. Huh? Not the, fish. No. Sestina yeah, is still unaware her infested smoked catfish won't be allowed on the plane, and me nee has to phone the family once again. Hi man. This is me nee from Southwest Airlines again. Okay, um, we've gone through the first bag with, with the lady and we've noticed that there are maggots in some of the fish. We've put that aside in a bag and I think I'm gonna have a problem explaining to her that that, that fish would not go. It's up to him, okay? If he says it can't go, then it can't go. Back at BWI, and it's time to check Sestina's second bag. Is it going to be more bad news for the Nigerian grandma-to-be? Nothing to do with this. Ma'am, just one moment, please. Just one moment. Put her here now. No, no. we can't. Let's, wait. Let's go through this and then we'll take care of this. Hey! Too. The fish got bugs. No bad, no bad. Another maggot. Look at that. Look at that. Look, look. 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 See all this? <laughs> See? All this. Uh, it's awful, uh, I beg you now. All of them is... It's hey. not maggot. I beg you now. I beg you now. It looks like the fish will be staying behind, but the bugs are making a run for it. The time it took, obviously, she's missed her flight now, but we've confirmed her for the next flight going out. But she saw we spoke to her family members over at Raleigh Durham. I don't think she's too pleased with the fact that her fish is not going. It's an anticlimax to her travel, but unfortunately, we can't have a go. Sestina will have to see her grandchild without her precious fish. At Baltimore Washington International, TJ inspects a bag containing some tiny stowaways. Oh, look at them all. Look at that. No, TSA just sent it over. Somebody just checked it upstairs. All kinds of dried food and a whole ant colony, apparently. Oh, oh man. Dang. Yeah, this ain't going. I can't go. The whole bag's not going to be able to go yeah. for the answer. Yeah. Put the whole bag in this There's bag. There's like hundreds of them in there. Here. They announced down in the gate area to go and get the passengers to come down and get the bag because obviously the bag can't go. If we don't get a hold of them, they'll go to Chicago and their bag, I guess, will just stay right here with us. So. Back at BWI, TJ's now at the gates in search of the owner of the ant infested bag. Still haven't gotten them, so we're gonna go see if we can track them down. I'm gonna make an announcement in the bar, see if they might be hanging out in there. Any Mertz in here? Anybody need Mertz in this car? So what are you trying to say? My mouth is bigger than yours? Pretty much, yeah. No luck there. 
got the boarding path deleted, so until pretty much when they try to board the plane, it's gonna pop up that they don't have a boarding pass. At that point, we can pretty much intercept them at the gate there and find out what they want to do with the contents of the bag. Because as of right now, that bag is definitely not going anywhere. At BWI, TJ's search continues for the owner of the ant-infested bag. First name is Mert, M-E-R-T. Spell the last name, Ustunal, U-S-T-U-N-U-N-A-L. And out steps Mert, 12 years old and accompanied by his uncle. Mert, did you, che you check in a bag downstairs? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're getting ready okay. to go. That bag is filled with ants. They can't go on the plane. Uh-oh. It will not go on the plane. That Something has to be done with that bag before okay, it, it can go. Take it with me. You, you can take it with you. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And we'll go ahead. Yeah, we're getting ready. Okay. Mert's Turkish, and his grandmother came from Turkey two or three days ago. He was visiting, and he's going back to Chicago. So she brought from Turkey je homemade jelly and nuts and a lot of food for him to take back to his parents. Obviously, it had ants in it. So if you want to go on down, you're all set. All right. See you later. Have a good trip. See you. Bye. Mert boards, minus his grandmother's Turkish delights. In L.A., Susie is dealing with a passenger whose bag has been denied boarding. Seems he's transporting something rather unusual. Sir, it has cockroaches in it. We're not going to store know. the bag. Let's see if it's got cockroaches. Let's well, we'll outside. take it outside and see it, but I can't have cockroaches running around in here. I don't understand that. When the TSA was doing their security check, a whole bunch of cockroaches came out of the bag, and we can't transport the bag like that. Step away now. Where in the hell is the cockroach? They say there's cockroaches in this bag. We got cockroaches in this airport. But I don't understand this. You can't take it like that. We can't no. check it. Oh. Let me have it so he wants piece. to shake. Wait a minute. What? He Just wants... you mean you got to shake all these clothes out? Yes. We need to make sure that there are no cockroaches in there because now you're going to be in the cabin of our aircraft. Cockroaches? They probably came from the same house as I did. I need to be completely sure that we don't have any more cockroaches in here for us to send this back. Well, the, the, the Sir, they're on your leg. Sir, you have there them on your no... leg. Huh? They're on your leg. Right there. They're coming out of the, underneath the wheels. They're on his pants. <laughs> look, look what happened. We're just gonna. We're gonna have to dispose of the bag. That bag cost me thirty some dollars. I ain't gonna throw that away. I don't think this bag is gonna go. But I don't I think he wants to depart with the bag. If Susie can't persuade James Laney to part with his bag, he won't be going anywhere. In L.A., James is still reluctant to part with his bag. So Mike has called in to persuade him otherwise. Did you check any other bags? Or is this the only bag you checked? No, I checked my other bags are gone. Let's hope but they're not in the other bags. But if this stuff from storage. It came from storage? This bag did. Yeah, so did the other bags come from storage? No. Then that's probably what the problem is. They live in storage and they breed. Don't throw the bag down anymore, sir. Why? Because you're not going to get them all out, and you're not going to be able to take this bag. You know what I mean? You just need to chalk this up, and let's throw this bag away. Just leave this alone, and we'll have somebody pick that up. Let it go. Let's put it next to this trash can. Just say goodbye. Why don't you step over here? With Mike's gentle persuasion, James's clothes are packed away, minus the cockroaches. A flip of the wrist. Thank you. All right, young man, let's go ahead. We'll go inside and get this tagged, and we'll get you on your way, all right? Three A isn't the only gate posing a problem. A swarm of potentially dangerous bees has formed a hive right on the jetway at gate 13. Usually, they're, they're on the belt loaders or the equipment down here. It's the first time I've ever seen them up in that area. Don't go to 13, there's bees. I know, it. I was just talking about The bees. How do they know there's oh. is there bees? There used to be rebels. Maybe they're outside. overreacting. 
Once again. Oh my God, it's a whole life. That's what I just said. That is wild. You said they have to find the queen bee in that whole pile up there, and then the rest of them will go. We won't be able to use this gate at all, which will make a little bit of complications for our crew downstairs, because they'll have to do gate changes and hold out. So we're missing one gate for a while till they fumigate our friendly bees. <laughs> Los Angeles International Airport, gate 13. And it's bee man Clayton Renwick to the rescue. I wonder what they're thinking right now. I wonder if they're I, I realize they know. The Get the queen in there, we got the queen, and so the rest will eventually just kind of disappear. The bees may be gone, but they're not forgotten. Do we have to close the gate for the rest of the day? I would Probably recommend for the rest that, of yes. The afternoon? We can't use the uh, gate for the rest of the night, because it's still going to have some bees around. Uh oh. 